Hello viewers, uh, welcome to ENI Roving Report. I'm Skyrim Zime. Today I'm joined by uh, Mwandu Monkikon, the official spokesperson for COVID-19 Nagaland. He'll be briefing us about the latest COVID updates in Nagaland. Hello sir, welcome to our show. Thank you, my pleasure. My first question to you is, uh, as uh, the case is rising in the state, how prepared is Nagaland? So, as of today, we have around 330 positive cases out of which 189 are uh, active and uh, we are also uh, we also have uh, 141 patients uh, who have recovered today this is uh, the update for for today okay. in terms of uh, our preparedness uh, you know as soon as the the pandemic started uh, the state of nagaland assessed our health infrastructure our ability in terms of uh, the human resource, especially doctors and nurses, nurses and the availability of uh, the health healthcare facilities, because nothing uh, in the world has prepared any state or any country for this pandemic. So we were learning from whatever little we could of this, uh, and, and uh, a lot of consultation was done. But today, I would say that uh, some of the few good initiatives that we have taken is uh, can be listed as one: we have the strictest quarantine policy in the country mm -hmm. and that is because we realized that uh, first of all when we reviewed our health infrastructure we didn't have testing labs uh, we didn't have uh, the TrueNet machines and also at that point of time the ICMR, ICMR had not uh, cleared the usage of uh, TrueNet as a testing machine for uh, COVID-19 mm -hmm. so uh, at that uh, time we immediately contacted our neighboring states like us like assam and uh, manipur mm -hmm. so we were, we were sending our samples swab samples to uh, jorhat guwahati dibugar and uh, infa mm -hmm. so uh, from zero testing capacity today i am happy and proud to announce that we have around 800 plus uh, testing done per day and in uh, another two weeks uh, or one and a half weeks from now it'll double uh, we also had uh, prepared you know so many quarantine centers in the state uh, more than uh, 200 actually okay. so we are uh, now prepared we have already you know we have already been handling cases so from one case we, we were not prepared to now a case of uh, to 330 which uh, the state itself is handling um, i think uh, we've come a long way so we have established already one BSL-2 lab and the next one is going to be inaugurated uh, by next week mm -hmm. in Dimapur. Mm -hmm. And a third one is coming in uh, Twinsam. So uh, it's pretty good right now. Most of our patients are you know, young persons. The returnees average is around between 18 to 44. So we've not had any cases about that uh, age group that I've just mentioned. And in, the, in, in case uh, we have uh, uh, any case above 69 years or 60 years, uh, I think uh, we are well prepared to handle that. Right now, we have faced around 11 cases which uh, were above 45 years, uh, so far among the positive cases. And uh, most of them have recovered. So in terms of uh, facilities for the elderly, we have the hospitals and uh, we have also we are also in touch with private hospitals to ensure that if anything happens, they are taken care of. So sufficient protective gears have been given to the healthcare workers. Is there any other uh, extra other measures taken for the healthcare like apart from this wearing the protective gears? What are the other measures taken? I think uh, this is a universal practice of the healthcare workers, especially the frontline uh, healthcare workers, uh, that they have their own separate SOPs. And uh, one of the challenges we faced right from the beginning was uh, the number of uh, human resources uh, available. So we have had, uh, because uh, they have their own protocols and uh, they have their own separate quarantine facilities, the issue of rooster duty, so that uh, the available human resource, uh, especially doctors and nurses, uh, rotate among themselves and therefore uh, because again we have a very strict quarantine policy the initial challenge was with the amount of returnees coming to the state uh, we were wondering as to how to ensure that the most you know area where returnees will come 
most number of areas um, returnees coming to whichever district we had to balance and place our healthcare professionals accordingly so that was one of the challenge and uh, i think uh, the government responded by one while we were bringing in our returnees in a phased manner we were also ensuring that uh, and today cabinet has um, already passed a, a decision for creation of more posts for doctors and we also hired and engaged uh, more doctors to ensure that uh, they are not overburdened and overworked I, among all the states assam has the highest number of uh, positive cases and second is assam uh, tripura which has crossed uh, 1000 so if you look at smaller states like uh, manipur meghalaya mizoram and uh, nagaland at least uh, uh, i think uh, all the states are faring well and then one of the i think uh, reasons why there are less cases is not because uh, we are testing less if you look at assam it has crossed uh, 3 lakhs uh, or test actually and it has uh, tested more than uh, the state of kerala so in terms of uh, uh, you know the national average you would see that the north eastern states are performing better and within the north east uh, we also i mean uh, nagaland state comes fourth after manipur mm-hmm. and uh, <clears throat> we have seen that because uh, of our strict quarantine policy and the protocols we have put in place uh because we have already experienced that most of the cases are uh, of the returnees and uh, it started with uh, the returnees from chennai and it <coughs> continued so if you look at uh, nagaland situation uh, we were able to contain because as soon as uh, the returnees come we put them in uh, quarantine facilities and institutional quarantine was made compulsory there is a paid quarantine as well so for 14 days they have to be in institutional quarantine then uh, uh, all of the returnees were tested but uh, after a period of a month we had uh, sufficient experience uh, and learning from our experience we uh, ensured that now the second you know batch because uh, at least uh, more than nine special trains have come now arranged by the government of nagaland to bring back our stranded citizens to nagaland so we have ensured that now from the train station itself they will be screened and uh, monitored and if they are asymptomatic they are able to travel they will be sent to their own respective districts where quarantine facilities are in place where the district hospitals have been converted into um, covid uh, hospitals and um, where we have now established a uh, true net mission so that uh, they can be tested in their respective districts so uh, from the beginning till now from the first case that we discovered and uh, i mean we <coughs> found and uh, till now if you look at it i think our protocols have been has enabled us uh, with the help of of course the civil society the churches you know uh, and and every healthcare frontline workers in nagaland have helped us in containing the uh, spread and there has been no community spread of the covid-19 as of now thankfully the challenge was also to ensure that uh, that fear was dispelled so we had run a lot of uh, awareness campaign through the medical department using our uh, you know uh, local rts and uh, <coughs> through social media however the panic was because of uh, also the the fact that the first case that was found positive he also had traveled from kolkata to uh, dimapur was sent to guwahati for treatment because that time we were uh, not so well prepared so later on as uh, more cases started coming uh, and then when the returnees started coming and uh, we found cases in nagaland people sort of uh, started understanding we use the radio especially for the rural sector because in the rural sector people tune in to the radio every evening so that was one medium we used to effectively dispel all the myths all the all the you know uh, uh, rumors being spread about covid-19 so once that was done now i think uh, people are no longer worried about uh, you know <clears throat> that fear and panic which gripped them initially now their concern is to ensure that there is no community spread there is no uh, panic when it comes to our districts and now we have uh, cases in at least five districts 
So people are at least now uh, getting to know that because of the high recovery rate in Nagaland, people are getting to know that this is not the death sentence. So initially people say, thought that, you know, once you have the COVID-19 is a death sentence and all that. So the precautionary measures were taken and I'm very happy that uh, in spite of uh, small hiccups here and there, which is normal in every state of uh, the country, we've been able to manage uh, and we've been able to, uh, you know, <clears throat> overcome the initial panic. How effective is the assistance given by the Indian Council of Medical Research? Uh, two ways of looking at the assistance we've received. One, because of the lockdown, transportation of, uh, you know, equipments uh, were hampered. So uh, we use the services of the Indian Air Force to, to, to deliver the BSL-2 lab, for instance, and all the PPEs and the other kit necessary for frontline healthcare workers straight from, uh, airlifted straight from Delhi. So that was one of the challenges we had, which uh, of course was a result with the intervention of the uh, central government. Number two, the ICMR, ICMR has been uh, in constant touch with our health department. And I should say that uh, the, the support has been satisfactory till now. Every healthcare frontline workers in Nagaland have helped us in containing the uh, spread. And there has been no community spread of the COVID-19 as of now, thankfully. Well, thank you, sir, for joining with us and giving thank us the details on yeah. COVID-19. Yeah, thank you.